Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Terry and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy life to watch our broadcast. And we believe that we're going to share some things with you today that's going to help you in your spiritual growth. And in particular, it's going to help you develop a more powerful and an accurate prayer life. We're going to be talking about the prayer of petition. And I'm really excited about this subject because it is something that I have studied and applied for over 40 years. And I always like to say about the prayer of petition, when you're facing what seems to be the most impossible situation you've ever faced, I have discovered the prayer of petition is the kind of prayer that produces the quickest results. So if you're facing some impossible looking situations right now, then don't you dare turn the station. You watch very closely as Terry and I talk to you about the prayer petition. Terry, I'm so glad you're with me today, and I know that you've learned how to pray the prayer petition, got right. tremendous results, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to your comments. I agree that it does produce results in what seems to be impossible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we get so many prayer requests from people facing things that look absolutely impossible. Yeah. So I believe, just like you said, and I believe that people are watching by divine appointment, that you're going to get that answer, because I am so excited about this. This has become my new favorite My Jerry Savelle book, book. <laughs> yeah. on the prayer petition. You know, I have been teaching on the prayer petition for well, 40 years. I can remember uh, meetings that I would go to, one meeting in particular in Toronto where I had like a whole week there and every morning I taught on this. In fact, I have my notes from it right here. Toronto, March 31st, 1989, yeah. prayer petition. And uh, God began to teach me this. It actually began uh, when I first came to the Lord in 1969. And, of course, back then, uh, we didn't have, you know, iPods and CDs, not even had cassettes. It was reel-to-reel -reel tapes. And the meeting that I was in with Kenneth Copeland, where he came to Shreveport, Louisiana, where your mom and I grew up, where we were living and where you were born, and uh, he came... And, and taught on prayer. But he talked about from Ephesians 6, which I'll read in a few moments. He said, Paul said that we are to pray with all kinds of prayer. Well, that was a revelation to me. I didn't know there were different kinds of prayer. And then he began to talk about each different kind of prayer specifically. But the one that really made an impact on me was when he taught on the prayer petition. So I took... Uh, that one lesson that he did on the prayer petition. And actually it was, it was not a whole lesson. He kind of uh, finished up his week and just mentioned the prayer petition, talked about it a little bit, just gave us enough information that stirred me up mm -hmm. to want to study it more. And so I began studying on prayer. That was like next to favor. That was the second thing God began to teach me. Now, I brought with me in the studio today my very first notebook. Look, it says from 1969 to 1973. And right here, you know, see my dividers? This one's on faith. This one's on the authority of the believer. This one's on healing. And this one's on uh, the power of the Word of God. And, and then there's a whole section on prayer. Mm -hmm. And my first outline was how to pray, how to go into prayer. And by the time I concluded this, you know, study on prayer, the prayer petition was the one that just seemed to jump out at me. And it seemed like that once I learned how to pray that, the things that seem most impossible, like for instance, there's, look, look at this section right here, prayer agreements and grants. Mm -hmm. These are written out prayers because that's what a petition is. It is a formal request. It, it is a prayer that you don't just pray right off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. It's not a prayer that you pray suddenly. It's a prayer that you take the time to research the Bible and build a case. Okay. The Bible says um, that God is the judge of all the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, the prayer petition is much like a lawyer going into court and having prepared his case ahead of time. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just walk in there and say, well, you know, Judge, we sure hope that you see it our way. He goes in there having looked at his reference books of other laws, you know, Johnson versus Smith, and he has all the facts of how the law is stated in that particular case. And he presents that before that court. All right. 
The prayer petition is the prayer where you go through the Word of God. This, this, is, this is your law book, so to speak. You go through the Word of God, finding everything you can find on that specific need that you have in your life, and then you write it out mm -hmm. as a formal petition. Yes. And you go before God with that formal petition. And the way I always did it is I read it before God. God, your Word says, and then I start quoting the Word of God. You see, I, I discovered that to build an accurate prayer life, your prayer must be based on the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God is the will of God. Not only that, but when you base your prayer on what the Word says, and you've got all the scriptural evidence that it is God's will to meet that need, because here's what 1 Samuel says, here's what Psalm says, here's what Luke says, here's what Paul said in Ephesians. We know that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So this is the will of God. Now, if I'm taking the time to research and then I write it out in a formal petition and I bring it before God, then I am going to have confidence that what I just prayed, He hears me. And 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, and if I know He hears me, then I know I have the petitions petitions that I've desired of him. So for instance, let me just give you an example and then we'll get into the, you know, the actual practical application of this, the teaching of it and so forth. In 1969, I owned an automotive business. I owned a paint and body shop. You never knew me as a paint and body man, <laughs> but I owned a, a paint and body shop mm -hmm. and I had uh, <clears throat> accepted the call to preach and the Lord had instructed me to shut my business down and go to the guest bedroom in our house and study the Word of God and prepare for the ministry. Now, the only problem with all that is I had debts. I had business debts. I had personal debts. And I thought, well, God, I'm struggling with a job to get my debts paid off. How in the world will I ever pay them off if I'm going to a guest bedroom and he told me do this for the next three months, no less than eight hours a day. How am I going to pay these bills off? I mean, I was struggling with a job. How am I going to do it without a job? Right. You know, and mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that anybody else do this. Uh, this was a word from heaven. This was a rhema to me. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of people in agreement with me. Uh, my dad, who I loved very much, and he loved me, and he was so proud of me because my dad had wanted to own his own paint and body shop all his life. He never got there. And here I am. I had one by the time I was 21 years old, owned my own business. So he was proud of me that I had accomplished something that he had always dreamed of. Now that I was shutting it down, he could not understand that. My own daddy had thought I'd lost my mind, <laughs> you know, which my daddy and I were extremely close. And, to, and I'll never forget that one day he came to the house and he said, son, this is wrong. How are you going to take care of your family? And he said, a man that don't work, don't eat. A man that don't take care of his family is worse than an infidel, you know, and he <laughs> drove off and, verse. oh, I felt so bad. I thought, you know, it bothers me that my dad is not in agreement with me because we'd never had any differences. We were extremely close, but it made me that much more determined to prove mm -hmm. that what I'd heard from God would work. And so I dove into this, studying the Word of God day and night. And so here I am. I got all these debts and I'm believing God. And so, you know, here and there would come a little, God would do something and, and help me get some of the pressure off. You know, somebody would come by and say, can you work on my car? I said, I don't have my shop anymore. I don't care where you do it. Do it out in your backyard. You know, I just want you to do it. So that would help, you know, relieve some of the pressure or one time I even, I even went down and worked at a TG and Y warehouse, driving a forklift, unloading boxcars. But I'd get my eight hours in the Word that night. I never missed eight hours in the Word, even if I had to do something else to kind of, you know, keep the pressure off. Mm -hmm. Well, over a period of time, all those debts were paid off with the exception of one. And it was $283.32. Wow. And I just, it just seemed like I could not get my hands 
on that last $283.32 that I owed as a business debt. I, I'll never forget, I owed it to a, uh, a uh, glass company uh, where you replace glass in a car that had been wrecked. And I owed $283.32 to this glass company. And I went by and told him, I promise you, I'll get it paid. We know, Jerry, you've always been a man of your word. When? I said, I don't know, but I will get it paid, you know? And it just seemed like the devil was trying his best to humiliate me in front of those people and to try to prove, well, you can get some results with this, but it doesn't work all the time. You know, and man, I got this battle going on. So finally I decided I am going to write a heavenly petition for this money that I owe. And because it seemed impossible. Now, of course, $283.32 today doesn't seem like a whole lot. But two eighty three thirty two dollars in 1971 mm -hmm. might as well have been like 25000 today, mm -hmm. you know. But here's what I said. Be it known this day, December the 4th, 1971. Now, 69... I surrendered my life in February 69. September, shortly after you were born, September 69 is when I shut my business down. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we're talking about less than two years. Mm -hmm. All right? So be it known this day, December the 4th, 1971, 5.55 p.m., I receive a heavenly grant in the amount of $283.32. Father, in the name of Jesus... I come before your throne boldly, and I present you your word. According to John 16, 23, the Amplified Version, Jesus said, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that my Father will grant you whatever you ask in my name. I'm asking for a heavenly grant. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Mark 11, 24, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. That's the Amplified Version. Your word states in Luke 36, Luke 6, 38, rather, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Therefore, in accordance to your word, I give the amount of one-tenth of my grant. Now, that means... I had $28.33 that I could sow. Yes. And I said, I am giving one-tenth of my grant, and I believe I receive a tenfold return. Ten times 28.32 would be $283.32. In accordance to Matthew 18.18, 18, I bind Satan and all his forces. I render them helpless. They will not hinder my grant. I loose the ministering spirits according to Hebrews 1, 13 and 14, and I charge them to go forth and cause my grant to come into my hands. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. Therefore, we set ourselves in agreement and believe we receive. And I now put witnesses and I had your mom to sign it. I signed it. And then a, uh, a young man that was coming to our Bible study by the name of Don Burton, I had him to sign it. So now we've got three people in agreement that this will come to pass. Now, that was December 1971. Before that year was up, there was somebody knocked on my back door and said, Jerry, God told me to bring you this. And it was $300. Enough, more than more enough, than to pay my final bill off in my business. Wow. Now, I had been struggling for two years to get that debt paid off. Mm -hmm. And then, as a result of writing that prayer, in less than 30 days, it came to pass. Now, I'm not promising everybody that, you know, everything will happen in less than 30 days. Mm -hmm. But what it showed me was that the prayer of petition seems to get the quickest results in what appears to be the most impossible looking situations. Mm -hmm. Now, notice once again that I wrote this out. It became a formal request, and I went before the throne of God and presented it to him based all of it on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's the key with the prayer petition. 
You never pray the prayer petition wondering what is the will of God. You always pray the prayer petition knowing what is the will of God. And you find that right here. That's good. I love that. And you know, Dad, like you, throughout your petition, I noticed you said, Jesus said, Jesus said in this verse. To me, that's no different than, you know, there's times I've told my daughter Cassidy, you know, if you do good when you get your shots, I'll go get you a toy. Yeah. And then afterwards she would say, Mama, you said that you would get me a toy if I didn't cry. Mama, you said, and she's holding me to that word. Right, right. That's what you're doing with the prayer of petition. You're saying, yeah. Jesus, you said that if two of us agree, or you said, if, if we have faith and do not doubt, if we believe, we will receive whatever we ask in prayer. Yeah. You're holding his word back to him. That's right. Now, I've been challenged with this in the past where people say, well, you're just, you're just demanding God to do something. No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. See, I'm basing this on his word. If God didn't mean this, then he shouldn't have put it in my copy of the book. Mm -hmm. If God, if Jesus did not mean whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give it you. Mm -hmm. Then he shouldn't have put it in here. All I'm doing is like Isaiah uh, says that his word will not return unto him void. What am I doing? I am returning to him his word Mm -hmm. and he promised it will not return void. It will accomplish. It will prosper in the thing I have sent it. So all I'm doing is, is I'm researching. What does his word say about my particular need? I'm researching. And once I find out what his word says, then I have this confidence that he will hear me. And I have the boldness to go before him and say, this is what your word says. And I thank you that you are faithful and you perform your word. Your word never fails. And you walk away from your prayer time knowing it's just a matter of time this will come to pass. That's right. Praise God, Terry. We're already out of time. <laughs> listen, we've got some special announcements to share with you. So listen now, watch this announcement very closely, then we'll be right back. In a time when your hopes and dreams for your family, your finances, and your calling are challenged by negative circumstances that say impossible, you can break through. Renowned Bible teacher and author Jerry Savelle has helped thousands of people discover the little known truths regarding a very special kind of prayer. And now he's poured over four decades of revelation and teaching onto the pages of a brand new book just for you. Prayer of Petition, Breaking Through the Impossible. In this remarkable new resource, Jerry reveals the powerful biblical principles concerning this specific and vital type of prayer. As you read each page, you'll discover how the prayer of petition is different from other types of prayer, how to pray according to God's will, how to experience real results when you pray, how to pray when you need a miracle, and much more. You don't have to go through another day wondering if God hears your prayers. Now you can have the understanding you need in order to experience God's miraculous power through the prayer of petition. Don't delay. This is the book on prayer you've been waiting for. This amazing resource of insight and hope is available to you for just $15. Call now. 800-211-4834 800-211-4834 or visit us at jerrysavelle.org to request your copy of Jerry Savelle's book, Prayer of Petition. We are so excited about this brand new book just came out on the Prayer of Petition. I know this is going to be one of those books that I tell all my friends to get yeah. because, you know, my dad's taught me this, how to pray the Prayer of Petition. And now that I've applied it in my life, I have seen more results come to pass Mm -hmm. by learning how to petition God for what I'm believing for. I'm talking about in so many random areas, like with my house, with furniture, with material things, but also with having a baby, believing God for an impossible situation to get pregnant. I've seen it happen in so many areas of my life. And you know when you find something that works and you're convinced? Nobody can talk you out of it. I know the prayer of petition works. You know, I like what our publisher said. There are multitudes of books on prayer. Yeah. But I've never seen one that dealt specifically with the prayer of petition. So I believe this is going to be a great revelation to the body of Christ. And and, uh, 
you know, like I said, I've been preaching it and teaching it for over 40 years, but to have it in book form, you know, where people can read it and follow along. And, and actually there's, we also put in, uh, uh, at the end of almost every chapter, sample prayers of petition, just like the one I read here, right. where people can learn how to do it for themselves. I love that. In yeah. fact, we have samples. If you're believing for his um, healing or physical restoration, there's a sample in here on that. Restoring a marriage. I love that because mm. it's like the homework's already been done, but yet you need to fill in what you're believing God for. Freedom from addiction freedom from mental anguish, and petitioning God for prosperity. Those are just some of the samples yeah. that, that we have in here that I know are going to be a blessing to you. The cool thing is, too, not only have I experienced it in my life, and, of course, Dad has in his life, but we have received so many testimonies from our partners and friends, people watching the broadcast on the prayer petition, who have actually grabbed hold of it and said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to study to show myself approved. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the time to write my vision, make it plain on paper. You know, that comes from Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Write the vision, exactly what you're believing God for. And then they're getting results. Yep. Listen to this one. Someone wrote in and said, in January of 2010, I sowed $200 for a harvest of 8000 We were needing this within two months. It says, I prayed the prayer of petition that Brother Jerry taught. The money came in with 3000 left in mm. the account. Praise God. Isn't that, Isn't awesome? that awesome? Yeah. But I just think it's, it <clears throat> really is studying to show yourself approved. Yeah. I love what I heard Kenneth Hagin said one time that, you know, random moments, he would see people praying at the altar, and he would just gently tap them on the shoulder and say, what are you praying about? Mm -hmm. And many times he'd hear people say, oh, nothing in particular. And he'd say, that's exactly what you're going to get. Nothing in particular. Right. Well, the prayer of petition is something very particular. Yeah, it's, it's you very specific. Very specific. You've done the homework. You're saying, Lord, I am believing God for $8,000. You said in your word, and you just start confessing the word back to him. And then you, in the book, there is a sample mm -hmm. petition specifically for financial prosperity. Right. Yeah. Which that's been a big thing that you've applied in your life. Mm -hmm. And dad's got samples and illustrations of... Him and mom believing for furniture, houses, all kinds of stuff way back in the 70s and 80s. And I believe it's really going to give you that, you know, the answers to what you've been looking for in your own life of, dear Lord, I've been praying about the same thing for years and nothing's changing. Have you ever applied the prayer of petition? Well, you know, we, we've taught this on the television broadcast before, mm -hmm. but we didn't have the book to offer them. And that, to me... Uh, that kind of seals it. When, when you hear it taught, mm -hmm. but then you have the resources, and I don't know, I, I love listening to things, but I am an avid reader. I love reading mm -hmm. even more than listening to things, you know. Yeah. Listen, I do most of my listening when I'm on long trips, yeah. and I've got hours to fly to Africa. Then I got my iPod, and I'm listening to powerful faith-building messages. But when I'm on vacation or when I'm just, you know, got some time where I can just sit, uh, I love reading. Mm -hmm. And the thing I love about this is it's not just, you know, stories that have happened to me. It's a manual. Mm -hmm. It'll teach you how to get the same results. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about the fact that we're teaching this again on our broadcast, but we have this resource to offer them mm -hmm. so that they can learn how to do it for themselves. Yes. And, you know, there's confidence building scriptures in here. I love that mm -hmm. because I'm one of those types that different times you would say, you know, go to the word, find what you're looking for. And I would be like, oh, dear Lord, where? The Bible is that thick. Where mm -hmm. am I going to find this scripture? Well, we have put confidence building scriptures in here yeah. where all you have to do is read the book. And we've got scriptures for your marriage, scriptures for healing in your body scriptures to be free from that mental anguish, stress, anxiety, yeah. depression, whatever it is you're facing, there's already scriptures in here that you can put in your petition. And then read it out loud. Yeah. There's something about speaking it out loud. It's exactly what God did. He mm -hmm. said, you know, Romans says, we serve a God who gives life to the dead and speaks of non-existent things as if they already exist. So that's what you're doing when you read your petition out loud. So we're excited about this. I want you to get it, the prayer of petition, and then get to, you know, do your homework. 
write your own petition, whatever it is you're believing for. All you have to do is call the number on the screen or go online, and we will get this to you as soon as possible because I know once you hear a message like this, it's like you want it now. You want to start writing your petition now. So, Dad, thank you for teaching us this. Oh, I'm excited about it. And we're going to continue talking about this in the programs ahead, so don't miss them. And once again, thanks for joining with us, and we pray that God's Word will, be, will become real and alive in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. In a time when your hopes and dreams for your family, your finances, and your calling are challenged by negative circumstances that say impossible, you can break through. Renowned Bible teacher and author Jerry Savelle has helped thousands of people discover the little-known truths regarding a very special kind of prayer. And now he's poured over four decades of revelation and teaching onto the pages of a brand new book just for you, Prayer of Petition. Breaking Through the Impossible. In this remarkable new resource, Jerry reveals the powerful biblical principles concerning this specific and vital type of prayer. As you read each page, you'll discover how the prayer of petition is different from other types of prayer, how to pray according to God's will, how to experience real results when you pray, how to pray when you need a miracle, and much more. You don't have to go through another day wondering if God hears your prayers. Now you can have the understanding you need in order to experience God's miraculous power through the prayer of petition. Don't delay. This is the book on prayer you've been waiting for. This amazing resource of insight and hope is available to you for just $15. Call now. 800-211-4834 or visit us at jerrysavelle.org to request your copy of Jerry Savelle's book, Prayer of Petition. Every week, Jerry Savelle Ministries International is making a powerful difference in the lives of people around the world. But that's only possible because of the financial support of friends like you. That's why we'd like to invite you to join us as we continue to take the power of God's Word to a global audience in such great need. So call the number on your screen to discover more about Jerry Savelle Ministries today. Both Jerry and his daughter, Terry Savelle Foy, invite you to explore our other ministry resources on the web at jerrysavelle.org. Join us again next week as you continue your journey to discovering God's blessing in your life where God can transform your circumstances and you can discover your destiny.